All right, our black base coat is dry, and here is the image that we are gonna use. Now, we're not actually using these things. We're gonna let the alcohol ink do its thing to create that, so we're really only using this piece here. Now, do you need to have a pattern to do that? Probably not, but for those that are more comfortable with it, it is there, it'll be, uh, the link to it will be in the um, supply list. So super inexpensive way to transfer what you need onto a dark surface is just regular old school chalk. So I'm just going to put it on the back right there. Make sure that you've got a decent amount covered. I do flick it to get some of the excess dust off and I want my jellyfish to go a little bit on the angle. So then all I'm going to do is use a pencil, you could use a pen. Doesn't really matter what you use, you just want something that's sharp to transfer your image there. So let's move this to the side. I'm gonna get a bit of a wet wipe just to wipe any of this excess dust off. Now I actually do want my top to be a little bit bigger than that. So when I mask it, I'm gonna mask a little bit bigger. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna use some tape. I don't want my jellyfish tentacles, spines or whatever to go past that. So I'm just going to put a piece of tape there to mask that off. And chances are it won't, but if by chance it does go past or it does go up to the tape, I'll show you how to soften that line there. But I just want to protect it. The other thing is, is sometimes when you're blowing alcohol ink, you get little splatters. So I'm just trying to protect it from that type of thing before having to clean it up. And really, tape is the easiest way. All right. So I'm going to use a masking fluid with a fine top to it. To do the top area there. Now I'm going to let that dry completely, or mostly, and then I'm gonna use some liquid latex just to fill in the rest of this area here. I don't want to, this is, the, my masking fluid is a little bit more expensive than the liquid latex is, so I just want to be using um, more of the liquid latex to cover the larger area. If you get any big bubbles, just take a, something that's a fine tip, a needle, a toothpick, a thumbtack, and just pop those bubbles there. So I'm gonna let this dry and I'll see you back when that is dry and we'll add some liquid latex. All right, our liquid masking fluid is pretty much dry. So we are ready to put on our um, liquid latex. So I'm going to put some painter's pyramids under the piece here, just to raise it off the surface. There we go. And then pour carefully. So I've got a little silicone sheet on my um, work table here so that anything that happens to drip down or drip off can just go right onto that. So I don't need to worry about anything below or com missing completely. It's going down the side of the bottle. This liquid latex is awesome to work with, but the bottle definitely has its challenges. So I'm trying to put a decent thick layer on there because I wanna make sure that it is covered and covered well. Now, having said that, the thicker the layer, the longer it's gonna take for it to dry. So just be prepared. You might have to wait a couple hours for your liquid latex to completely dry to do your next step. But I always like to make sure that it's well covered rather than wishing I had put a little bit more on there. All right, there we go. Once again, any bubbles that are big, I wanna pop them because 
if by chance they pop when they're half dried, I'll have a dot that is not protected. So I wanna make sure that my work surface is protected as much as possible. All right, so I am going to leave that alone to completely dry. This here, super simple to pick right off my work surface. So even though it's a mess right now, it's really not that big of a deal. So I'll see you once this has all completely dried.